DiscerningHearts.com in cooperation with the Institute for Priestly Formation presents The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ with Deacon James Keating. Deacon Keating is the Director of Theological Formation at the Institute for Priestly Formation located at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Deacon Keating has led more than 400 workshops on moral theology and spirituality and has authored numerous books including The Way of Mystery, Listening for Truth, and Spiritual Fatherhood. The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ with Deacon James Keating. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We've been discussing a subject that for many people, though they may not want to admit it, but deep down inside, seems very repulsive, and that's suffering. We are in a culture that just does not want to look at the face of suffering. No, and our own church says that unnecessary suffering should be um, taken away or, or dealt with. Certainly we're not a church that will, suffering, and pain. But there's always this remainder factor because of our humanity and our limit and our finitude and our brokenness that uh, the complete eradication of pain will probably be impossible. Whether it's physical pain through medicine, the recovery that happens after some type of medical treatments, emotional pain, uh, despite our pharmacology, probably will never be able to escape totally suffering and pain. And even though the church teaches that pain is an evil, you're not morally evil for undergoing pain, but it's a physical evil, what the church traditionally calls a physical evil, like when a, a hurricane comes and knocks someone's house down. That's a physical evil. That's a, a suffering that uh, is just not to be tolerated. It is something that should not be. And yet, in fact, we know we have to endure these things because of the condition of our world. And so, that being said, there are these realities in life which will carry suffering and pain. And the church has always struggled with teaching its members how to approach this type of suffering that cannot be eradicated, pain that cannot be stopped. And it has always looked to the Lord to do its teaching. And the Lord has always taught from the cross, and he has always taught from his healing hand. And so there are two places that the church looks. The first is the healing hand of Christ, as he went around through the New Testament and healed the lepers or healed uh, people who were physically afflicted with medical conditions. We see the will of God very clear there. God's will is our well-being. God's will is our happiness. And yet we also see him mounting the cross. And what does that mean? What is the will of God there? And it appears to be that God's will is that we suffer love. And we have to use the word we suffer love because as we noted in a previous conversation, love is not natural to us. What's natural to us is to be preoccupied with the self. And so to offer ourselves for another which is what the cross is symbolizing, to live a self-donative life like the bridegroom Christ did toward his bride involves pain and suffering. And so here we have the great mystery of Jesus in a, what the theologians would call in an eschatological way, in a way that anticipates heaven, in other words, we see Jesus going around healing and eradicating pain. 
but a very deeply incarnational way. We see him calling out to us from the cross that I am here with you, I am one with you, and I'm trying to teach you and trying to empower you to become fully human in grace and to choose to love even if it kills you, to choose to love even if it is painful. For in this world, love will be painful. In this world, love will kill. First it kills the ego, and in the martyr, the martyr it will kill even the body. But in this world, love is not welcomed. And so Jesus is trying to teach us that I have undergone this love first. I have offered myself for the bride. And now through my Holy Spirit, which came at Pentecost, I infuse this spirit of love in you too, so that you can choose to love, even though it will bring you suffering. First, the death of your own ego, and then second, other types of suffering that will befall you, that I will be, I will be there for you. You cannot see them yet, you cannot see them now, but they may come. And when they come as a result of your commitment to love, I will be there for you. And I will empower you to stay faithful to love, even though it involves suffering. And in fact, your commitment to stay faithful to love, even though it involves pain and suffering, will in fact be your road to happiness, which is the great paradox of Christian holiness. Throughout the Gospels, you've pointed out that we have all the images of Jesus healing the emotional and also the physical sufferings of those he encounters. But there comes a point in the Gospels, probably one of the most poignant moments, where he is on the cross and encounters two individuals who are in a great deal of suffering next to him on their individual crosses from the Gospel of Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingly power. And he said to him, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And we see here the great drama of the human situation. You have God, who is taken in, on the human situation in love, in the center of the scene. And uh, he is basically saying, this act of my love on the cross demands a response. Okay, so what will be your response? And the first criminal, out of his pain, speaks a type of blasphemy. The temptation that is so common or so familiar to all of us who are in pain to pass through this blasphemous stage. I hate you, God. Where are you, God? You call yourself God. See, and Christ absorbs these words. He suffers these words. Where are you, God? And of course, Jesus is saying, you're talking to me. I'm right here with you. And, you know, the pain sometimes is so great that it blinds our mind and turns our will from the very reality of God. God has deigned to share any pain 
and any suffering that we are in. The criminal on the cross is speaking to a man who is equally crucified. And he's saying to him, why don't you save yourself? You know, why don't you prove to me your God? Why don't you prove? Prove. And Jesus says, I am proving. I'm proving that I am the one you are looking for by staying here with you, by not coming down from the cross. And for some reason, uh, the very presence of Jesus, at least in this scenario, was unable to uh, soften and make vulnerable the heart of this first criminal. And yet on the other side, there was this other human being in pain, suffering. He too looking for God. But for whatever reason, he had a clarity of thought about his own human state. I am guilty, he said. I've done something really evil. And he thought to himself, I deserve this pain. He knew that Jesus was innocent. And he adored the Lord in the Lord's innocence. It was a befuddlement to this man. A paradox. Why are you staying? A puzzle. You are God. You are innocent. And yet you stay with us in our pain. In our suffering. And he began to sing the praises of Jesus. I am a sinner. You are innocent. You have done nothing wrong. I deserve this. And living in the fullness of this truth, the response of God himself was, you have made yourself so vulnerable to the mystery of my love for you that I promise you, your suffering, your pain will end. in and by the mystery of my eternal love for you. And this day, you will be with me in heaven. And so this second criminal related all of his human truth. He confessed his weakness. He confessed his sins. He related his pain upon the cross to the truth of his own guilt. And further, he related it to the innocence of the one who was suffering lovingly right next to him. And the response of God was that both of us will transcend this suffering in the mystery of time and death. And when this time and death is finished, both of us will know the freedom and the happiness of pain-free love. And we will be together. And the drama here, of course, is, well, what about the other criminal? Did Jesus not take him. And once again, as we look at the other criminal, we do not see the same vulnerability. We do not see the same existence in reality as the second criminal. In order for us to be saved, to have our suffering and our pain taken up into the love of God, we have got to live in reality. And the reality is, we are sinners, we are limited, we are broken. If we relate all of that to the love of God, then we will be living in reality, and then God will be able to reach us. We'll return in just a moment to The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ. 
with Deacon James Keating. Communion with Christ audio CD booklet set is a series of CDs by Deacon James Keating, Ph.D., who looks at the foundations and dynamics of deep Christian prayer with spiritual depth and theological richness. He leads listeners to communion and intimacy with God through the Father, through Christ and the Spirit. In this series of eight talks on four discs, you will find practical advice on how to pray and how to sustain a prayer life. Learn what to expect during prayer. Discover how prayer is related to happiness and salvation. Experience personal growth in your prayer life and much more. Listening to Communion with Christ will itself be an occasion of prayer. Communion with Christ, practical prayer, is perfect for personal use or in a small group setting. To obtain a copy of Communion with Christ, contact ipfpublications.com or call 1-888-309-5520. A teaching of St. Paul from his second letter to the Corinthians. We are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is is eternal. Litany of Humility O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted. Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I. That others may be esteemed more than I. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. That others may be chosen and I set aside. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. That others may be preferred to me in everything. That others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Amen. Amen. We now return to The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ with Deacon James Keating. God did not place the criminals on those crosses and yet he didn't cause their suffering but it's as though he entered into it with them God in terms of revelation God does not cause the pain and the suffering that we are in when we are talking about moral suffering we cause that pain and that suffering When we are talking about physical evil, sickness, natural disasters, these are the signs of the truth that this is not heaven, that we still labor, we still journey to holiness, 
Earth does not exhaust holiness. Earth still has signs of decrepitude and sin and mortality and death. These are all banished in heaven. But we still journey through time, which itself is a sign of limitation. And so no God does not want us to suffer. And for us to continue in relationship with this God, we have to continue in relationship with him like the second thief, almost in sublime adoration that innocence itself would choose to suffer what we suffer in time. The beauty and the majesty of the second thief is that he was in a stance of adoration before the innocence of God. Notice how he wasn't uh, consumed by himself. He noted that he was a sinner, and then he turned every ounce of his energy toward the one who was suffering next to him. And he began to adore the mystery he could not understand. But you, you are innocent. Who are you? What would lead you to do this? To share my death? To share my hospital room? To share my brokenness in my loneliness? What would lead you to do this? You who are innocence itself. And of course, Jesus' only answer is, I am love. I am love. It's love that leads me to be with you in your pain and suffering. Now, will you let me this close? See, the first criminal, for whatever reason, would not let the mystery of this love close. And so his pain remained. The second criminal, for whatever reason, allowed the deepest of intimacy between his pain and the pain of Jesus. And it was in that vulnerability that Christ could reach in and save him and bring him to the Father. Do not be afraid in your pain and in your suffering to let Jesus closer than you imagine. This is salvation. Let him closer than you can imagine. Invite him into your very wounds. Invite him into your very anger. Invite him into your very disappointment, your sadness, your grief. Do not be afraid to let him close. And we all then will hear, this day you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that what's at the heart of hope? Exactly. You cannot see, you cannot feel, you cannot touch, and yet you trust the promises of Jesus. To hope is to trust the promises of Jesus in the face of of little evidence that these promises will ever come true. It is a supernatural gift that we need to pray for. Very few of us ever pray for the virtue of hope to take up residence in us. More and more we have to say, Jesus, give me hope. Particularly as we grow older or our life progresses, more and more we are going to need the supernatural virtue of hope, the infused gift of hope, that even though I cannot see it or feel it or experience it, I know that God is faithful to his promises and in some mysterious way he's working out my salvation through this suffering and pain. And one day I too will be in heaven. He didn't take away the suffering from the thief next to him on the cross. He had to endure it, didn't he? And this is such a scandalous reality to Christianity. It's that this God that's supposed to love us leaves us in pain. 
And yet analogously, parents can understand this type of limit to love in our own child-rearing, where many times we have to stand by and endure the suffering of our own children. For either we cannot step in, or we dare not step in. And in a faint way, in a way that bears a deeper mystery than that which I just spoke about parenting, God dares not step in. Because in some mysterious way, in ways that are known only to him and his sacred heart. He knows that if we find him in this suffering, our happiness will be rich, beyond measure, flowing over. And the great tragedy is that so many of us will not accept his invitation to dwell in our wounds, to dwell in our pain. And so our suffering becomes an occasion of meaninglessness and anger. But notice the second thief, where his suffering and Christ's suffering became linked in an ecstasy of worship and adoration and wonder. Notice that his suffering made him think of God's generosity. Not that I am alone here suffering and in pain, but oh, I remember that you chose to come and suffer with me and to share my pain. You chose it while it befell me. This is what makes Jesus so fascinating because he beguiles us with this love. And this, of course, is not simply historical for this man since the Spirit and since God is timeless. He is continually loving us in the pain and calling us to share it with him. Thank you, Deacon Keating. Thank you. You've been listening to The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ with Deacon James Keating. To hear and or download this episode along with many others, go to discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of discerninghearts.com in cooperation with the Institute for Priestly Formation. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. Join me next time for The Heart of Hope, Suffering and the Cross of Christ with Deacon James Keating.